Hi guys, I'm MartyCore, and we all know The Sims 2 has a pretty impressive genetics system. But I've only fully covered The Sims so far. Not even sure if that fully, because I discover new things every month, this game is freaking bottomless. But anyway, what about pets? There's only the balloon dog video that I will talk about here as well. So let's dig in and find out in detail how pet genetics work. If we have two pets, female and male, of the same species, we can breed them. They need to have a decent relationship with each other and with the sim asking them to breed. Because you do that with the try for puppy or try for kitten with interaction. And you need to have any kind of dog house on your lot because that's where pets woohoo. If it's successful, the female becomes pregnant and pregnancy length isn't always the same. It's somewhere in between 48 and 60 hours. Even though the variation is only 12 hours, you will always be surprised when labor actually happens. And you can't see any signs of pregnancy on the pet, there's no belly, no trimester division, only her needs will decay faster, especially hunger. They have a similar need penalty to pregnant sims, but they have different needs as well, right? The number of puppies or kittens out of one pregnancy can go up to four. That is, of course, if you have enough space, as you can only have six pets in one household or ten characters altogether. So if you already have five sims and two pets, max three pets can be born. We can't really talk about genetics without an overview of how creating a pet works. We have a choice of breeds already in the game, and they're supposed to look like real-life breeds, even if they don't actually resemble them very much sometimes. But we can edit the existing breeds or just choose the clean template, the create a pet breed, my favorite, and start from scratch. You can also save breeds in CAS and save fur patterns if you'd like to reuse them. Animals in The Sims 2 have layers. To be specific, their fur has layers. When creating a pet, you can give them different colors and patterns and layer them on top of each other. You can even make the same layer over and over. I haven't really seen any limitation to how many layers you can make because I made over a hundred and I could still go on. You might think that even though we have quite a selection of colors for pets, it's still limited, right? But it's actually not really that limited, especially when it comes to the visual aspect. Because you can have a white cat, for example, and put a ginger full layer on it and change opacity so that you can get any color in between. So you can mix colors however you want. If the beige color in the game is not exactly what you're looking for, you can put brown on top of it and just get the exact shade of beige that you want. That's super cool. Plus we have a certain selection of sliders where we can modify legs, face, ears, any shape component of the pet. We can also choose different types of tails or ears and right clicking on templates works exactly the same as in human cast. So you only get 10% of that template and sliders reset so we can do very crazy things. There is no fitness for pets. So if you want your pet to look more chubby or more skinny, you have to do that with sliders. For dogs, we can choose one of five coat types from smooth to curly. And for cats, there are three. Coat type can significantly change the colors of the pet. And there's also code shape that we can modify with an additional slider. And add fur accessories, because apparently the devs didn't realize the poodle puffs are part of the poodle's fur and the shape is just how they're groomed. No, they are just additional accessories. Same for like the, the mustache that terriers have. For the eyes, we have a pretty decent selection and we can give the pet heterochromia, that is eyes of different colors each. So now, in genetics, every layer can either be passed down or not. So if you have, for example, one pet with Dalmatian spots and another with a brown spot on their ear, you can get any combination of those characteristics. So a blank dog, a dog with both the Dalmatian spots and the ear, or anything in between. So we can hide layers and make a pet that will be able to pass down any color to their offspring. This is a substitute for recessive genes because pets don't actually have them, sadly. 
nothing is dominant, nothing is recessive, and the pets can't get their eye color from their grandma. The layer is always inherited along with the opacity setting. Even if you have two pets with the same exact layer but different opacity, you will not get anything in between, either one or the other. There's also this one peculiar thing that I discovered about hidden layers. I had cases of a hidden layer appearing on offspring, but it was only a spot, actually a little bit visible on the parent. But it never worked for the full body layer that was hidden between other full body layers and not visible. And I gave my game a lot of chances to do it, so much breeding. Always the offspring just had the top color of one parent. So this also applies to the half opacity layers that you can use to change the color. I made one cat white with half opacity black, so it looked gray, and another cat yellow with half opacity orange, so it looked light orange. None of their many, many kittens had those layers mixed. So I never got a cat that was like peach or like yellow olive. It's kind of like those two layers couldn't be separated. This is um, weird, but oddly realistic. Why would the offspring have a completely different color than the parents, right? I can't believe the idea that the devs might have actually thought that through. It's incredible. And of course, the general shape sliders are passed down very similarly to The Sims. So if one pet has very thick legs and the other one has very thin legs, the offspring can either have thick or thin either one slider or the other slider. But any slider can be just inherited separately, I'm pretty sure. Fur accessories can also be inherited from parents. If the pet has two different eye colors, the offspring can have both eyes of either color. In testing, I noticed that inheriting heterochromia is actually very rare. I made 16 kittens out of two parents with heterochromia, and none of them had two different eyes. In all of the tests that I did, there was only one kitten that had two different eye colors from parents where only one of them had it. So in heterochromia passing down this rarely, I can't really tell if it's possible to inherit two different eye colors from two different parents. Never happened in my game, but let me know if it happened in yours. I know it's pretty common or even very common in later Sims games, but in The Sims 2 it's kind of puzzling. And there's also the balloon dog situation that I will repeat myself about here. The code shape and the slider can be inherited separately, and not every shape looks the same with the same slider. So sometimes you can end up with dogs that don't really resemble their parents in code shape. It can either be a very puffy dog or a very skinny looking dog. So when it comes to pre-made breeds, even though crossbreeding, probably not the best idea, but in the game we can do anything with no bad consequences. This can happen, for example, when mixing a chihuahua with a spaniel. If we breed a large dog with a small dog, it's exactly what they say. The offspring will be an exact clone of the mother. Doesn't matter if she's the large dog or the small one. It's interesting because in Create a Sim you can make a miniature version of a bigger dog by choosing a breed and just clicking on a small dog. The dog just shrinks but has all the genetics. Works the same from small to large. So I'm not sure why the game can't mix the genetics of two dogs of different sizes. It definitely has resources to do that. Fun fact though, if you breed pets with the baby pet creator by Nopki, you'll get normal genetic mixes from dogs of different sizes. So I guess it could have been possible. Also, the game will never choose a small and large dog as DNA parents for generating puppies in the adoption pool. During gameplay, we can edit our pet's appearance in the mirror, including changing their entire coat where we can delete and add layers. Or just choose a pre-made coat, maybe even one that we saved. And I hate to say it, but this actually changes genetics. I mean, it can be useful sometimes, so it's good to know. Editing in the mirror is like a little create a pet app, just without the slider section. You can't change sliders. Pets don't have anything extra written underneath in their DNA like Sims do. 
Actually, when you go into SimPE, you can barely see any info about their DNA. It's all a matter of what you actually see in the game. It feels a bit shallow compared to how complex the genetics in fact are. Unfortunately, we can't see fur patterns on puppies and kittens, so it's like you adopt a white puppy and it turns out to be a Shiba in you, so like a ginger blonde dog. There's a mod that fixes that. And we can't see two different eye colors either and the mod doesn't help with that. But the vanilla way of choosing baby pet coat color makes more sense than you think. Okay, first I'll give you a few seconds to try to guess how many colors puppies and kittens can have each. Did you say four? I would have said the same. It seems like there can only be black, white, beige, and maybe ginger for cats, right? Not right. Every single color available in the game has a puppy or kitten color attached to it. So it's 10 colors for puppies and 9 colors for kittens, and not counting the ones that you can unlock by getting promoted at pet careers, because those also come with their own baby pet colors. Yes, you can have green kittens of two shades, or blue puppies. I don't have all of them unlocked, but you know, there's also pink. And this is something that you might have noticed, that baby pets actually show coat type, so even in one color, they can look different from one another. And the color of the eyes is important too, because they don't just get the eyes that they will have as adults. The red color comes with red eyes for the puppy. Kinda creepy, but that's how you can tell it apart from the medium brown one, as the fur itself is very similar. The reason why you don't see those colors much in game is that the color of the baby pet is the base color of the adult pet, the one that is beneath all the layers. And not that many breeds have like red or silver as their base color. The Shiba Inu dog breed has a white base. The Siamese cat breed has a black base, so the kitten will be black even though the adult is mostly beige. The puppy color of black with a brown spot around the eyes is the black base color for the flowing coat type. That's why it's different from the standard black puppy. And of course, this was all checked without the mod I mentioned before. I'm not stupid. But I still recommend the mod though, even if this turned out to be a lot more complicated than I thought. It is logical in a way, as if the game can't show the above layers, it just comes down to the base color. But also we can be really surprised what the base color of a certain breed actually is. The base color of fur is very important, as it also determines the color of fur accessories. So if you add another layer to kind of recolor the pet, as I mentioned before, the fur accessories will look different from the visual main color. This is a trick for more interesting looking pets. Okay, so now the most important question. Is there sequence syndrome, also known as the firstborn syndrome for pets? As in, if I have puppies, then leave the game and have another set of puppies from the same parents, will the puppies be clones? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but I can tell you that there's definitely something wrong with the seed here too not the pet seed, the seed of random results. You know what I mean. I bred dogs the natural way, so through pregnancy, no mods included here. I saved the game before the puppies arrived and had the same labor multiple times, quitting the entire game and launching it again after each one. I always named the puppies Orion and Roxy, where Orion was the firstborn. They were of different sex in different sessions, of course, because there's a 50-50 chance at each birth, as there is with Sims as well, but that doesn't exactly matter for the sequence syndrome. I took screenshots and compared the dogs. Orion was exactly the same dog in each session. Same looks, same personality, same zodiac sign, even though apparently the sign gets randomized regardless of personality for pets. And Roxy was also the same dog, but excluding the first time. I don't think there's a high chance of anything spawning in the background during that process. She was the second born. Maybe I did something wrong in the first attempt, even if Orion was the same dog. But the next three sessions showed that it's very, very, very likely that the sequence syndrome is here as well. It's kind of disappointing, really. I would expect this to be fixed in the pets EP, but I I'm assuming that the devs maybe never even realized they made that mistake and maybe even 
even copied some of the code from how human sims work. Oh well. But you know, with pets, this is really hard to notice and to be an actual annoyance because how many bunches of baby pets can you get out of one pair of parents? It's usually one and you move on, especially if you get four puppies or kittens at once. It's a lot more noticeable with human sims. Oh, and in Inheriting Personality, it seems like only the parents' points can be passed down in different configurations. There are no random variations to it as there are with human sims. Except the sign, that is completely random. So this is finally the end of this video. I hope you learned something, because I did, once again. Of course I did. The puppy situation really surprised me, like, I nearly went nuts when I saw that you can actually have a green kitten. So I started digging. That's how it happened. The genetic system for pets has its quirks, as you can see, but I still think it's really, really good. You can end up having really interesting mixes of pets. Some hidden layers can actually show up. Even if there's no recessive or dominant, that doesn't matter because there are so many possibilities. An honorable mention for The Sims 3 pet genetic system that is also really good. It's a little bit more complicated as one layer can actually like be moved on the offspring a little bit. Like you can have a spot that is not exactly in the same place as the mom. But at the same time, sometimes the patterns just get like really weird on the offspring. So it also has its quirks, but I, I, I feel like both of those systems are just like equally nicely done. I am glad I finally got to the bottom of all of this and as always, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!